Math matchup, 23-year-old Ryan Simonelli versus Hall of Famer and 32-time PBA Tour title winner Norm Duke. Simonelli doesn't appear to be feeling the pressure, at least not yet. Uh, I was actually pretty relaxed. He, He's actually good friends of the guy who is backing me now. And uh, my ba he was telling me that my backer texted him, told him to take it easy on, on his kid. Ryan even said before we went out there, are we going to have fun? We said, I don't know, it depends on who wins. <laughs> Somebody's going to have some fun, I'm sure of that. He's from Buffalo, New York. Please welcome Ryan Simonelli. Now I'm getting a little nervous. So I'm getting close to the exemption to win, and that's what, that's what I'm fighting for. So now it's, in, it's within grasp. Now I'm thinking about it. And he's capable of burying me. He's capable of burying anybody because in this bowling center, all week long, he's, that's what he's done. One of the greatest legends the sport has ever produced. Please welcome PBA Hall of Famer, Norm Duke. You know, the people were cheering for both of us. And, you know, people are, are making little comments, you know, you know, there was there was some laughs. Me and Norm were joking around as well. And with the fans, it was good interacting and it, it definitely kept me calm. Simonelli will start us off on this best of seven match play finals here at the Cheetah Championships. Good start for the Southpaw. Yeah, he doesn't leave anything in the bag. He just gets a whole handful. Ryan Simonelli's got a lot of game, but he doesn't have the experience of a Norm Duke. And even though Norm Duke won uh, at the age of 18, uh, Norm's come a long way since then. And if you look at what he's done the last 10 years, his last 10 has probably been his best. Norm Duke looking for his 33rd Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour title. You see over his left shoulder wearing the bright yellow jacket, his mom Martha Crooks in attendance, as is his aunt. Of our finalists start off with strikes. For the first time ever in the history of the PBA, we're going to have a best four out of seven title match. For Ryan Seminelli, the newcomer, first time on television, it's a huge advantage for him because he knows that if he gets off to a bad start, he still has other games to make it up. Second frame for Duke. Back to back. Opening jacks for Storm and Norman. What'd you expect? About what we got. Simonelli with the strike in the first. Here he is in the second. Oh, the late kick of the seven for the lefty from Buffalo. Both Simonelli and Duke would strike in the second frame of game one. But then Simonelli began to have some issues. Leaving the seven on this pair of lanes had been a problem for Simonelli in another tournament. Uh, the semifinal in the sweeper that I bowled, where I shot a buck 90 to lose, uh, I actually was bowling on that pair. And I left three plaque sevens on that, on that lane, on that left lane. But Simonelli and his urethane ball seem to have put the history on this pair behind. Stringing together two more strikes. <laughs> Meanwhile, Norm was having problems of his own. Norm in the fifth. Oof. Right through the nose. That's called the Greek church. There's only one thing worse than throwing a big four when you have a four bagger, and that's leaving a Greek church on a four-bagger, which is exactly what Norm did. Norm would strike in frame six, but even so, he had opened the door wide for Simonelli. So a strike for Norm in the sixth. Here's Simonelli looking for three in a row. Again with the seven. Sometimes throwing your thing, you're going to leave those plaque sevens. And he would leave the seven again in the seventh frame on that left lane.
But Duke failed to capitalize, leaving the 10 in frame seven. And the six pin in the eighth. I mean, this match has come down to two things. Ryan Simonelli not being able to carry the seven pin on the left lane, and Norm Duke getting off to a red hot start, and now all of a sudden he needs a road map to get to the pocket. Norm Duke, 10th frame, working on a strike, and strike out to shoot 232, and put all the pressure on young Simonelli. It's the 10 to drop, but leaves the 4-7. While Duke continued to search for a fix, Simonelli dialed in the double he needed to win the game. I, I expected to be so anxious and so worked up that I would make multiple bad shots. I, you know, I felt pretty good. I felt confident in what I was doing physically. Even though he's lost the first game of the best of seven Cheetah final, Norm Duke isn't worried. He feels the lane conditions are starting to work in his favor. We're starting to carry oil down. The more oil you carry down next to the pins, the harder it is to get your ball to drive those pins. So you're going to start leaving corner pins. So I saw already I knew that the, the pace was coming down. But then when you factor in the left lane rack and the right lane rack and how they affected me on the right lane and him on the left, I knew the scoring pace was not going to nearly touch 250, 260 like we're, like we're used to. And that plays into my hands. So, you know, automatically I said, hey, whoa, whoa. Opening strike for Duke here in game number two. So Simonelli up now in the first. He took game number one, 226, 212. In the bugaboo with the seven. Another seven pin for Ryan Simonelli. Now you're starting to ask yourself, hey, is this the beginning of the end for this kid? Maybe not. Come on, carry. Double for Ryan Simonelli in this best of seven game match. I felt pretty good coming out of the gate the second game because when I moved a little bit left, on the right lane, I was able to hold the ball in line. And I actually did the same thing on the left lane, and I threw it really well and really fun.